All right, so let's talk about the surface of Mars. Um, when we look at its overall characteristics, it has a fairly small mass and radius compared to the Earth, so only about half the size of Earth in terms of radius and only about a tenth of its mass. It has a relatively low density compared to Earth as well. Um, and its orbital period, of course, is longer because it's farther from the sun. Um, its rotation period, however, is fairly similar to Earth at only 1.026 Earth days. At its orbital tilt is 25.2 degrees compared to Earth's 23 and a half. So also fairly similar orbital tilt. Uh, therefore, Mars should experience fairly similar seasons to Earth. Of course, the seasons on Mars are different than the seasons on Earth for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being that it simply has very little atmospheric pressure. Um, another being that its eccentricity actually makes it so it is closer to the sun during its summer. And so that tends to amplify its seasons compared to Earth's. All right, when we take a closer look at Mars's surface, um, you'll notice there's one huge feature here, a very obvious feature, kind of a gash across the surface of the planet. And that is called the Valles Marineris. So here it is in a sort of you know, map projection view. Um, Valles Marineris is this huge canyon. The Tharsis Bulge is right next door, which is a region that is relatively higher and covered in volcanoes. And then the Hellas Basin is a huge impact crater. Um, I think it's helpful to look at false color maps of planetary surfaces. So this is color coded by elevation with the red, brown, and white being the highest elevations and the blue and purple being the very lowest elevations. So you can see how deep the Hellas Basin is compared to the rest of the average. And also note that Mars has a relatively flat northern region, what we would call its lowlands, and then a um, heavily cratered highland region. And this is very similar to what we saw on both Mercury and the Moon and Venus, actually, where it has low-lying lava plains and high-lying heavily cratered regions with mountains. So those are all the similarities between Mars, Mercury, and the Moon and Venus to some extent. Um, but that's sort of where the similarities end. So I told you about the Hell Space and is a huge impact crater, the largest impact crater on Mars. Um, it is drastically different in um, elevation than the surrounding area. So it's 7.1 kilometers deep. So question for you. We've seen three main surface features, one, the Hellas Basin, two, the Valles Marineris, and three, the Tharsis Bulge. And my question for you is, how do you suppose the Valles Marineris formed? Okay, I see a split between one and two. Um, no one took the bait for number three. So remember on Mercury, some of the um, scarps that we see on Mercury, those were wrinkles that formed as a cooling planet shrunk. Valles Marineris is not like that. Um, but it's also not a feature that's carved by liquid water. Earth's Grand Canyon is carved by liquid water. Um, some of the um, width of Valles Marineris may be due to some water erosion in the past, but originally the Valles Marineris was ripped open as upwelling magma caused the surface to flex upwards and basically just split open the land. So this is a what we would call a volcanic feature, I suppose. So in that tectonic history, we have this huge canyon formed as the magma wells up and tears the surface open. And if we look a little bit closer, um, it kind of looks like the same as a cake, right? So this is like the, the top of a cake expanding and, and splitting open the crust. Lots of analogies could be made between features on planets and cakes. So this is not a feature caused by plate tectonics. And actually, there are no tectonic plates on Mars at all. But there is seismic activity. So there are earthquakes, even though there is not plate tectonics. Um, and 
you can listen if you're curious what a Mars quake sounds like um, because NASA's InSight program has a unit that listens for Mars quakes. And remember back to how we learned about the Earth's interior composition. Uh, we look at how S and P waves travel through the surface after they're created by earthquakes. And we track them and see where they um, can reach on other parts of the Earth's surface. And in doing so, we can probe the interior structure and composition of Earth. So importantly, that's what the missions are trying to do on Mars now by measuring Mars quakes is measure the interior of Mars. And so far they've come up with some surprises. So this is all an area of ongoing research. There was a big paper um, published earlier this summer that said that the interior of Mars, its mantle um, composition and thickness were fairly different than what we thought before. So this is a, an evolving area of research. Okay, so our last um, surface feature of note here is the Tharsis bulge. So like I said, this is a highland region. Um, it's volcanic, it's covering volcanoes. You can see four main volcanoes here. So this is a region made by upswelling magma. And the largest of these volcanoes is this one at the upper left corner called Olympus Mons. This is not only the largest volcano on Mars, but it's also the largest volcano in the entire solar system. Um, it's a big shield volcano, meaning that it's just formed by lava pouring out of the surface. And when compared with other shield volcanoes on Venus and Mars, um, it is truly big. So um, here is an image of the heights. Sorry, this is um, subtitled in French. I couldn't find an English version. Um, but uh, the Hawaiian Islands are a good example of a similar shield volcano on Earth. And measured from their base, which is at the bottom of the ocean floor, they're taller than Mount Everest. So on Earth, these volcanoes are, you know, around eight to 10,000 meters. Olympus Mons is 22 and a half thousand meters. So we'd like to understand why did this volcano get so tall? So what, what do you think? Okay, so some of these are, you know, potential contributors. Um, I don't really think that the temperature of the magma would, I don't know how that would make any difference. Um, that was just a, a decoy. Um, so how do some of these other factors contribute? Well, the first one doesn't really make sense, right? The volcanoes would be a more recent feature than the, the shrinking of the planet early on, whenever that might have happened early in its history. Um, the Hellas Basin impact I don't see how that would necessarily push up volcanoes, um, but number three and number five are both reasonable contributing factors. Um, number five, there's no wind or water erosion on Mars. Um, there is some wind erosion, and there has been in the past water erosion. Those aren't very significant compared to Earth, of course. Um, so that could be a contributing factor, but by far the biggest factor is Mars's low gravity. So low gravity simply allows mountains to pile higher than they could under higher gravity. So um, if we compare Venus, Earth, and Mars and look at the tallest mountain on each one, um, all of these are uh, volcanic shield features. So on Venus, Maxwell Mountain is 11 kilometers tall. On Earth, Mauna Kea is about 10k tall. And on Mars, Olympus Mons is 25k tall. So notice Venus and Earth fairly similar in height and Olympus Mars is about two and a half times higher than either of those. So if we look at the surface gravity of those planets compared to Earth, um, the surface gravity of Venus is about 91% of Earth's surface gravity and Mars is about 38%. So you can, you can see that they're directly correlated. Um, if we look at the percentage in particular, the gravity on Venus is about 9% smaller, um, but the gravity on Mars is about two and a half times smaller. So that matches up pretty well with how much taller its mountains are. There is specific physics that determines how tall a mountain can be. Um, and so this is 
pretty much the governing variable is the surface gravity.